Okay, so today I'm gonna to give you my first impressions on this. This is the Beagle Drone, Drone Kit 2, and it's designed for beginners in mind, so I want you to bear that in mind as you watch this video. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here. You're watching Original Dobo, and today we're taking a look at this. This is the Beagle Drone, and this is their Drone Kit 2, and it's it's actually already assembled, it's, it's right here. So I'm gonna walk you through sort of like what Beagle is, what you can expect out of their products. So if you've been considering this, and the lack of videos on the Beagle 2 Drone Kit 2, or the Beagle, I don't know, I don't know. It's the Drone Kit 2, but don't get too familiar with that name because they are updating this to the Drone Kit X, which is going to improve on a lot of the complaints that I have with this drone. So with that being said, let's talk about what comes in this box. So right out of the gate, you get a lot with this. So firstly, you are going to get spare props, obviously. You're gonna get a charger. Now the charger is, where did the charger go? Okay, the charger's right here. It's capable of charging up to a 4S battery. Um, it's a very simplistic charger. And it was designed, again, for beginners in mind because beginners are probably gonna be like, ah, I don't know how to charge my batteries. So it does charge via a balance lead. So it's a 4S or 3S battery. So if you have anything larger than that, it's not gonna be able to charge that. It does come with a three cell LiPo battery. Now this is a 1300 three cell LiPo. It's probably on the larger side of three cell batteries. It's not gonna give you the max amount of power that you would get out of something like a four cell battery, but you do get a uh, three cell battery, which is actually a pretty good three cell battery. Um, with that being said, you also get a controller in the box. Now the controller that does come with this, this is a, uh, a FlySky RC controller. And while there's nothing wrong with this controller, it feels perfectly solid in the hand. I do not fly FlySky products. I fly either FR Sky or Crossfire. And the controllers that I am used to ergonomically as of now flying for a while is a Tyrannus X90 Plus or even that of a Jumper T16 or T18 Pro is, is what I've been using. So I went ahead and swapped out my receiver, and this is the receiver that it came with. This is a FlySky receiver. I swapped out this receiver for an FR Sky receiver. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, oh my gosh, you're swapping stuff out. It's gonna perform different. And no, a receiver won't affect the way the drone really handles or performs, unless if you're using something like Crossfire that has lower latency, that would be the only thing I would say. The nice thing about this drone is, yes, everything is plug and play, and the where they do have them soldered to the plugs, you can use an S-Bus receiver. All you have to do is go into Betaflight and uh, make a configuration change to be able to utilize a S-Bus FR Sky receiver. So there you go, so you can make a change. Let me get this box out of the way. So I did make some other changes to this drone and primarily to the camera. So the camera was a big sort of stopping point to me when I first booted up this drone and flew it for the very first time. I was like, holy shit, the camera on this drone is terrible. Let me grab the camera and show you what I'm talking about. So the FPV camera that they shipped this with is made by a company called Jai Bean. I don't know, it's, it's a no-name camera brand. Uh, Jin Jian, I can't even pronounce it, but it was really bad. The dynamic range on this camera and the auto exposure was so hit or miss, it made seeing things very dangerous. Either the skies were incredibly blown out or the shadows were incredibly crushed and you just couldn't fly anything safely. So I immediately swapped out this camera for a Foxeer camera, which I have in place right now. What's nice about this is swapping out a camera you would think would be such a massive task to do, but with the Beagle drone, it was pretty simple. It's just plug and play. If you don't already notice, inside this unit here, you have a little cable and you can just simply unplug this camera and plug in this camera and you're done. So if you want to upgrade your camera, you can easily do that. Doesn't void the warranty, which I think is pretty exceptional as well. I did go ahead and print a mount out because I thought this would help with some of the vibrations that I was getting in the camera. Although from what I found, I'm still getting vibrations in the camera as well. So this is something I'll have to work with the Beagle team to design a mount that utilizes this four point system to try to sort of uh, eliminate some of the vibrations that I am getting because it is really bad. I think a lot of it's really too to the fact how far the spacing is between these um, and maybe needs a little bit thicker plate 
um, or potentially just make a dedicated mount for a Hero 7 or even that of the Insta One R. All right, let's talk about the big selling point of this drone. The big selling point of this is that it is modular. And if you don't notice, I can go ahead and take these motors off. They all connect here, sort of like so. You can just sort of unplug these motors and then plug them in, which is something that I haven't really seen on a drone today. I know there are companies that do make motors like this, but um, this is a really nice touch. So everything is modular on this. If you don't like the motor configuration, you can always upgrade this and hot swap motors on the fly. So there is literally no soldering needed right out of the gate. The frame of this drone is also somewhat oversized for a five inch quad. It's, it's sort of big. And at first I was like, man, this thing is gonna fly really bad. And it doesn't fly bad at all. It's actually really, really super light. And you'll see in the flight test that we do, we do get vibration in the camera. I want you to try to disregard that as much as you can, but it did fly really, really well for how the frame is designed. It's also really simple for a beginner to put together. There's just not a lot of thought that you need to have in, in this when you do it all. The other nice thing is if you do fly on concrete like I do often, the screws on the bottom sort of protrude a little bit, which means that you're not going to shear them off quite as easily like I do with some of my other frames. But I do beg the question whether or not this carbon fiber is thick enough to really survive a heavy crash. Now, I did crash this a few times, not on concrete, and it came out really unscathed, but it's just something that you want to keep in mind. Also, when you set these motors up, it's really nice. There's a whole guide process to put everything together. So like literally every step of the way as you go, Beagle is sort of walking you through it and telling you what you need to do. You notice there is different color screws on each of the motors that tell you where these motors should be positioned on the aircraft. So that is something that is really nice. Now, what's powering this? What's at the core of this unit? Well, it's a Mamba F405 stack. There is an AKK VTX. And again, everything is super plug and play. No soldering required, so if you break something, you just pop something off, put something on. Now, plug and play is not new to FPV, but what is new is a company that will warranty if you have a crash. So something cool that Beagle offers is their crash warranty. Basically, they will unconditionally support you if you break the frame. If you have a bad VTX, they're gonna warranty it, no questions asked. If you have a bad motor that blows, they're going to warranty that for you. Almost every aspect of what you see in front of me is something that they will warranty and expedite shipping for you. One of the biggest problems that I've had with FPV since I started is when I break apart, you're sort of shit out of luck and these companies really give you a song and a dance about replacing the products. So because of that, it's sort of a turnoff sometimes when you break something, you're just having to replace and buy it again. But with Beagle, they have their care warranty and they sort of take care of you similar to what DJI does on their GPS drones. They're doing here, but it's like a no questions asked type of thing. You'd also think that replacing the camera or the receiver on the drone would void the warranty, but not with Beagle. They didn't void the warranty. They actually encourage you to tinker and tune your drone to your own liking, which I think is pretty cool. But with that being said, let me go ahead and throw up some DVR and some footage out of the uh, Insta One X so you can see sort of how it does and how the DVR is. The DVR was into my Fat Sharks, so keep that in mind as you look at this footage, and we'll be right back. Taught that talk in reality, you have not seen me in action You think the come up comes overnight, you ain't behind the scenes Trust me, these things don't just happen No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy When you try to eat, I produce it and rapping. I read that contract, you sent me to sign But excuse me, I can't help myself, I'm just laughing Hey, you try to cut out a piece of my pie And I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me, yeah I produce all my own beats and I have no intention of losing my publisher, yeah Independent individual, boy, I've been eating off passive residuals, yeah Let's be professional, thanks for your time, but I I had to decline at that principle. Huh. I've been scheming up a plan. Hey. I've been saving all I can. Hey. You can call me David Rams. Hey. The way I handle these bands. Hey. We ain't messing with the old model. Oh. You wear a new kid, we full throttle. Oh. Just know that the come up is not a flow. My amigos, they focus, know what to do. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it. Yo, look. 
ain't saying that I'm rich Cause if I'm honest, I've never been But when I look at all these other kids I feel just a little bit ahead of them You should know the business is competitive There's a lot of people that I'm better than Even veterans ain't got the knowledge I do I've been reinvesting all I ever spent Stop pretending like you popping Who's been out here making profit Told my mama that I got this I wonder if she noticed what my job is I don't know how I'ma make it But I know no matter what I'm finna find a way All my homies finna eat and I ain't letting no one on my team Look at an empty plate, yeah, yeah, yeah Went from a boy to a man, ayy Every day been making plans, ayy They don't really understand, ayy Gotta look out for the fail, ayy I won't fall for any scam, yeah Only worry about the fans, yeah I won't compromise the brand, yeah I've been saving all the bands, whoa After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it Money in some really funny ways, man. I promise you, man, really getting paid. Yeah, show a couple bands like on the Instagram, man. Nobody getting fans that way. Yeah, will you really dumb if you spend all your funds on some clothes and your tape near work? Yeah, you ain't gonna stand if you win a businessman, man. I promise you, the plan ain't gonna work. Yeah, rappers spending money in some really funny ways, man. I promise you, man, really getting paid. Yeah, show a couple bands like on the Instagram, man. Nobody getting fans that way. Yeah. Alrighty, so we're out here at the field. I lost a bunch of footage on the Insta One R earlier today. So I thought I would come out here to the park to fly the Beagle drone and do some tests with it. I've been flying this a lot. I've actually got a lot of packs under its belt. So um, I sort of just left the stock tune. The only things that are different, like I said, are the camera and the receiver, but that shouldn't affect the way it's going to fly right out of the gate if you get this drone. I'm also going to be using 4S batteries just for better flight time. And to do you one better, I'm actually going to let Mike from Accelerated Heights uh, fly it as well so he can give you his thoughts and opinions on it as well as somebody who's been flying FPV for quite a while. All right, let's get this drone up in the air. Alrighty, so that was flight number one. I have an Insta One R on here and I was just able to get four minutes of flight. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the buck over to Mike, let him rip this. 
I'm just going to give him my controller RC. I just want to quickly go over the switches with him because sometimes when you go from one pilot to another, switches can be a little bit different. But um, yeah, not it's not a, a freestyle like tune on this. It's more of like a cruising, I guess, cinematic tune. So let me switch out batteries. Let Mike give it a rip. There's our 2300 kV. It is definitely light. Yeah, it's got a lot of float to it. It's very top heavy though. That's the only bad thing about it. VTX seems to be pretty strong. Uh, yeah. I think as long as you're right on the right channel, it's it's pretty good. Plus, it seems, one thing I notice is really seems to be able to slow it down quite a bit if you want to. I think it's those, thir uh, oh, there's people on the field. Yeah, I see them. I think it's those thir uh, 2300 kV motors. Like you can like really stop it almost on a dime. Pretty crazy though. So my take on this is it actually flies really cool. I'm surprised. Um, it's a little floaty, so but I'm sure all that can be taken care of in PIDs. But uh, flight time and man, it's light. And this this impressed me right here. I'm amazed that this you get as good signal as you do. I know. So I well, who, I like who, it. Who would no. you say who would you say that's for? Because obviously, like if you're if you're well, building drones today would you like would you buy a frame like that or would you recommend this like more towards like a beginner well i don't know if i would really recommend this as a beginner because of how light it is of course i may be wrong but i don't think i don't know how this would handle crash yeah that's my that's my only fear so the that's frame. only thing that i would say eh, maybe not a beginner but as far as everything else goes i like the way it sounds i like the way it flies um who knows, man? I, I think they're on they're on to something. Let's just say it that way. All right. So with looking at that footage, obviously I need to figure out the mounting situation. I'm going to design a proper mount for this for a GoPro Hero 7 and a Hero 8. And I'll try to make one for the Insta One X as well. And I'll provide it to Beagle so they can update this mount because I think a universal mount uh, is not the way to go for this. I think having dedicated mounts work a little bit better and it'll also keep some of those vibrations that we're seeing in the camera out. Also, these motors are 2300 kV motors, which are a little bit on the lower end of the kV for a drone like this. However, they do offer their Stealth Upgrades Kit, which you can get right here, which does give you a higher kV motor and a little bit larger stator. What's up? Okay, I'll just take a, um, a, a Whopper. Whopper with cheese. Shut the door, please. So with the Stealth Upgrade Kit, you're gonna get four motors and a 4S battery. And these are, like I said, 2,700 kV motors, and they are definitely a lot larger. I did not test these while I was doing any of the filming. I just wanted to see how the base drone kit performed. And it performed well, but I think with these motors, it will make an exceptional difference. Also remove some of that prop wash and vibration that I'm seeing that I'm getting out of these lower motors. Also for all my testing, I did use 4S batteries, which I would highly recommend buying because these 3S batteries, you're only gonna wanna fly these as you're learning, but the minute you sort of figure things out, you're definitely gonna wanna step up to a 4S LiPo. With that being said, I do feel like the flight times on the Drone Kit 2 are pretty adequate. The tune on it is very modest, but that's the thing. As you start learning, you can go ahead and tune this to your own liking. And with the whole guide that they have on their website to really walk you through beta flight, even just walking into this hobby as a total noob, they've really simplified the entire process. 
I would encourage you to check them out and wait for Drone Kit 2X to hit the market before you purchase something like this. But I think that this is a great point and the fact that it's a company that stands behind the product they sell and they're willing to warranty, uh, warranty the parts that you break out for you is definitely a big win because I know when I first started, I spent a lot of money on the wrong components and um, didn't ultimately have the best of experience, but it took me a little bit to figure it all out. Some things that I would like to see them do better is maybe drop the, uh, the Fly Sky receivers entirely and go with FR Sky. I think their controllers are a little bit better and it's something that you can grow with. Not many of you are probably gonna wanna keep that Fly Sky receiver very long. You're probably gonna upgrade to something like a Tyrannus Q or maybe an X9D or even that of a jumper. So I think that if Beagle wants to stay competitive, that they do need to think about the RC situation, even if they had to charge a little bit more and include a better controller, something you can grow with, I think that that would be a better option. Some of you also ask me if this is capable of running the DJI FPV system, and to that I'm gonna answer with yes, it is. However, you would be required to learn how to solder because there is not a direct connection between this and the FPV unit, but it is possible to run it on this stack. And uh, all in all, I am impressed with this frame. It does land pretty easily and smoothly. Um, you just gotta make sure that you tune it to your liking once you figure out how to use it. This is at least a good leaping point, a launch pad in any event, to get into the hobby because the entry into FPV is a little bit difficult, it's cumbersome, and it was one of the biggest reasons why I didn't start earlier. But I hope you enjoyed this video, hopefully it was enlightening. Again, this is just a first impressions, and I'll do a follow-up video when I test out the Stealth Motors along with their Drone Kit 2X to see how that improves the overall performance and capability of this drone. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below, and as always, stay original.